Welcome to Backstage with Richard Ridge. One of the most anticipated films of this holiday season is the new magical musical Wonka, which features a star-studded cast, including Timothy Chalamet. It is in theaters now, and the glorious soundtrack is available on Water Tower Music. And my guests are Neil Hannon, who wrote the new songs, and Joby Talbot, who composed the score. First of all, how did you get involved with Wonka? <laughs> well, um... You know, I, I I worked with Neil a long, long, long time ago. I was in the band with him back in the 1990s for, for eight years. We haven't worked together very much since, though. Not not like on purpose. We're still friends and still talk to each other. I don't see each, that much of each other because Neil's in Ireland and I'm in London. Um, but I heard that he was doing this and I, and, and I thought, well, good for him. And I wondered whether I'd get a call. <laughs> and eventually I did get a call from um, from Paul King, the director. Um, asking me whether I'd come in and have a meeting. And um, Neil had been on the project for some time with it by this point. All the songs were written. Um, but I knew Paul, I didn't know Paul personally, but I knew his work from Paddington, obviously a big fan. And of course, I leapt at the chance of going and seeing what my old friend Neil had been up to. And, uh, you know, I was kind of blown away by this amazing world building and this, you know, this, in this incredible reinterpretation of the classic movie that I, you know, obviously as part of everyone's DNA, um yeah watch the film down talk with paul and um next thing i knew i was hired i planned it from about 25 years ago uh <laughs> basically uh i i have this band called the divine comedy and uh over the years i have uh, uh, accumulated fans bizarrely uh and one of those fans turned out to be like a really successful uh, director of films called Paul King and uh, yeah I didn't know he was a fan until uh, we got the sort of emails saying uh, would you like to talk about perhaps doing some music for our next uh, you know thing so uh, uh, because you know we knew it was uh, Paul King of Paddington fame I pretty much said yes instantly. I didn't even ask much about the project. <laughs> so when you found out it was Wonka, like, was this like, you know, what, like, you got a gold ticket? Like, tell me what that was like when you found out what it was. There was a little bit of jumping up and down and singing My Ship is Coming In by <laughs> the Walker Brothers. <laughs> um, yeah, it was extraordinary, really, because I thought, you know, if somebody had asked me to sit down and come up with my perfect job, uh, this is pretty much it. Uh, you know, because I l love the original movie so much, the 1971 film, uh, and you're kind of brought up and you're, you're, you're almost uh, brainwashed uh, with these songs, uh, the Anthony Newley and Leslie Bricker songs. But you don't really know what they are. They're just they exist, you know. And I really love songs like that, that they're sort of always there. The the Oompa Loompa song was never written, it's just there, you know. <laughs> so that's what I sort of tried to do myself. Musically, what is the feel you wanted to bring to it? Because in this new version, it takes place in the 1940s. Yeah, though it's not specifically the 1940s, yeah. is it? Just like it's not specifically any country so there's a sense it could be 1940s could be 1950s i don't know um so we didn't want it to be too kind of of a of a period you know i did we didn't you know i wanted to reflect that slightly vague kind of magical you know there's a wonderful thing which i feel about the, the first the original 1971 film as well which is you know it's a film that seem that feels when you're watching it as a kid quite grown up and i think part of that is that you don't quite understand where it is or and, uh, you know, when it was set, who are these people? And I think Paul's very cleverly captured it, uh, the same thing in, in, in Wonka, that there is this sense of like, kind of, well, this place is amazing, but what is it? And we, we never, you know, we don't really know. So I didn't want to kind of make it fair. I didn't want the music to, to sort of negate that feeling, that slightly a bit at sea kind of feeling. We wanted to turn play in with that magical place that this this really could be anywhere. You know, it's, you know, world of pure imagination. 
Because that's what I loved about this movie. You really don't know when it takes place. And the sounds you create are so different with so many different genres of music. So that's what I love. But it's a perfect blend between what Paul wanted and what you wanted to bring to the film, which I think is really great. Yes, thanks. I mean, it was, you know, like we did we did talk about things like, you know, like maybe having some electric guitar in there. But yeah. instantly it made it seem you know, a little bit too grounded in, in, in a time, you know, a time when we, so yeah, um, we tried lots of different things and this is what we, this is what we ended up with. And, and it just feels that that's, you know, that's Paul's brilliance really is that he, he has the overall holistic sense of what the world of the film is in his head. And it's so strong that he can really entertain kind of out there options and live with them for a bit and then kind of you know maybe maybe not you know without getting distracted from his overall vision it's it's impressive really did you write a lot of the songs or all of the songs during the pandemic for the most part i wrote most of them yes uh, and a good deal more that you will never hear <laughs> during the pandemic and um i suppose you know not much good comes from a pandemic that's for sure um, but it certainly gave me something to concentrate on uh, because, you know, we were shut in like everybody else. Um, and, you know, I'm lucky to ha enough to have a job where I can actually keep working at home. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we there were a few that we, we you know, once it, it had sort of calmed down a bit and I was working in London uh, with them that I had to sort of come up with on the spot, so to speak. So I was going to ask you, which was one of the easier songs to write? And what was one of the most challenging songs that are both in the film for you? Well, strangely, um, the sort of the ballad, uh, the duet between Noodle and Willie uh, for a moment uh, was surprisingly simple because um, I knew it was for, a, a you know, quite a young girl. So I tried to make it, I sat down and I thought, you know, like a piano exercise kind of vibe, very sort of arpeggio in the right hand and kind of nice uh, classical chords. And, um, and the tune happened pretty much straight away. And it was one of the few where they went, yeah, that's really good, you know. <laughs> uh, the most difficult is was easily Hatful of Dreams, the opener. I think openers are always difficult because um, you really want to nail your colors to the mast and get it going in the right direction. And uh, I had a few false starts, but then when we got the idea of with that tune, it still, it just, I kept working on it and working on it and th they kept saying but it has to now do this and this and we'd chop verses out and we'd stick them back together and it for such a frankenstein song it actually sounds and works really well you know <laughs> it's really beautiful like i said it sets the whole tone of the film which is what you really want and when you have a director like paul king he's like change it a little bit like this do a little bit like this and then you see it up there and you're like it's absolutely brilliant <laughs> that's a, a relief and um if i think about it one of the few things that really sort of was retained all the way through was the da ba da ba ba da ba da 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 ba da rhythm you know just kind of because that was the thing that propelled it along and uh yeah, if that went, then I'd really just have to throw it all out and start again. <laughs> okay, you also went on to the set. Do you remember you were on yeah. the set for a big day? It was a big number. Was it Timothy Chalamet was on the set? Yeah, um, it was. Um, you've never had chocolate like this. The really sort of the big one in the middle of the movie. And uh, but it was just luck that I happened to turn up that day. And it's... It, I felt like I was on the set of Oliver, you know, it was just mass ranks of people in wonderful, uh, fantastic, uh, you know, wardrobe department. And um, and there was Timmy being Willie in his hat. And uh, and I had my, I'd squirreled my daughter in <laughs> as well. Uh, 
And even though she was uh, 20 at the time, she was still kind of like a bit weak at the knees for old Timmy. And they got to meet and I'm now number one dad in the world. Now, did you record part of the score at Abbey Road? We recorded a lot of the score at Abbey Road. Yeah, we were, we um, we pretty much recorded bits of this and mixed bits of this in every studio in London. Um, but the main orchestral sessions were in the big room at Abbey Road and the band, um, you know, the, the sort of combo sessions that we did prior to that um, back in January were in uh, Abbey Road 3 where the Beatles famously recorded their last, you know, and Pink Floyd did uh, Dark Side of the Moon, and you know, um, yeah, there's a magic to those places, you know, and I think I think you, I think you can, you know, it was interesting. The real sort of turning point um, in the in the whole arc of the making of this film happened after we started recording those sessions in in Abbey Road. It was, you know, truly amazing musicians. I mean, just the best musicians available. We managed it. We started really early in the new year, so nobody had really gone back to work because we thought it was our best chance of getting these guys. And we got our dream band. It was everybody we wanted. We had Randy Kerber on uh, on piano, who you know, I, he uh, I worked with him in L.A., but he he subsequently had moved to Paris. Um, so um, so I thought, well, that's not too far away. Let me see if we can get him over. And he came and did, did all the sessions. It's fantastic. What did you enjoy the most about working on Wonka? I just, I, I hmm. <laughs> it's a big question. It is a big question because there were so many elements. Um, really, the best thing about me getting this job uh, was that I think I got to see how it all works at the very highest level, which I'd never experienced before. And, you know, if I never get another film, you know, I've done it at the highest level. And that's, a, you know, it's like getting to the Olympics, really. <laughs> so I'm pretty proud of that. Did so you when you... Mom? Oh, totally. <laughs> keep, her on, keep her on speaker. Um, yeah. When you saw the film for the first time, all done, like what went through your mind? Well, the first time I saw it all the way through with, uh, properly with everything in, was at the premiere a few weeks ago. And um, the first thing that went through my mind was, hmm, the Royal Festival Hall doesn't have very good sound quality, does it? <laughs> but once I got over that, it was just a joy. And the film is magnificent. I mean, and I, I'm not saying that just to big it up. It just, it's the sort of film that I personally enjoy. So, yeah. I've seen it obviously a lot in, uh, you know, along the way and, but I had a really amazing experience when I saw it, like in its finished version, with all the music put in there in, in this in the in this dubbing suite in uh, in London. It was just like the whole kind of cumulative effect of it, like everything just landing exactly as we kind of intended it to. That when it gets to the you know the, the, that that very moving scene with his mother at the end, you know, I you know I was really tearing up. And then, and you don't you don't tear up on something that you've been you know, that involved with for that long. I mean, you'd think you'd be immune to its charms by then, but no, not at all. So what did you enjoy the most about working on Wonka? Um, you know what? The thing I'm enjoying the most is actually listening back to what we did. You know, we worked so hard on it and, you know, Usually with a movie score, you know, you, you you listen back at the end and you're like, it's great. I just wish we could have done this, this, and this, you know, all that, you know, that we never quite nailed that thing, you know, oh there we ran out of time on that. But this, I can honestly say that there is nothing that I'm not hundred percent thrilled with. So although it doesn't sound very romantic, the, the thing I'm I'm enjoying the most is just, you know, the movie being out there, seeing, you know, like talking to people who've been to see it my kids demanding they hear the soundtrack album over breakfast you know, for the 10th day running and and it, that's what i'm that's what i'm really loving it's uh it feels like all that work we did you know is really kind of paid off and that people are you know really really loving this beautiful movie
you're the funny little man who's been following me. Funny little man? How dare you? I will have you know that I am a perfectly respectable size for an Oompa Loompa. An Oompa what now? In fact, in Loompa Land, I am regarded as something of a whopper. They call me Lofty. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, greetings to you all. My name is Willy Wonka. You see, I'm something of a magician. Prepare to be amazed. Tape up. <laughs> Inventor. May I present Willy Wonka's wild and wonderful wishy-washy Wonka Walker. Please don't make me say that again. And chocolate maker. The best chocolate in the world. Ooh. He's good. Too good. And anyone can afford them. Even the... The poor? He doesn't like it when people say poor. Send Wonka a message. Do not sell chocolate in this town! You're gonna get more than a bonk on the head. I love a bonk on the head. What is with me today? You should stand up to those bullets. Give them the old one, two. I got an idea. Where do we start? Making chocolate, of course. Run away! Every good thing in this world started with a dream. So you hold on to yours. I guess it's time to change the world. Bumpa, lumpa, dumpa, diddy. I'm not in premium economy. Good night, sir. I am going flat. Huh. What is it? Nothing. Well, it's obviously something because you said, huh. Forget it. Very well. Huh. Oh, you did it again. Tell me what it is or I shall poke you quite viciously with a cocktail stick.